Truth, and I am Pastor Forbes from the Gateway Abiding World Ministries here in the Gambia. We are now in part four, I believe, of our series entitled How to Discern Your Next Steps and Your Next Moves, especially as concerns the major decisions in your life. We all know, as we have discussed prior, that nobody is born an adult save Adam and his wife, the woman that were created by God in the Garden of Eden as adults, every other person has been born through the womb of a woman and grows in stages into adulthood, into maturity, around which time we believe that we have possibly discovered our purpose our mission in life and we bring everything on board and to bear to actualize this to the glory of Almighty God. And for this to happen, there is upbringing, there is good grooming, there is child minding, there is religious instruction, there is moral training, there is academia, there is street wisdom. But all this put together, including your own motivation, your own, if you like, sixth sense, and the five senses of taste, touching, hearing, smelling, and seeing, all put together do not really give you all the tools you need. And because the truth about our life is that we are not just physical, because from time to time we dream, from time to time we have encounters that are not physical and yet we see their manifestations and outworkings are so physical that we know that the encounter we had was real. Some of those encounters are when we just fall asleep. Some of those encounters are not just even falling asleep at night. Sometimes they could be an afternoon siesta, a power nap or something. And that goes to instruct us all that there is life beyond the physical. There is a reality beyond the physical. In some countries in the Northern Hemisphere, they, they keep arguing about UFOs, unidentified flying objects, and their realities, and movies are made about extraterrestrials and all that. But you and I know that there is, for a fact, a realm beyond the realm of just seeing, touching, smelling, tasting, and hearing. There is a realm beyond the realm of just having a diploma, a, a certificate of tradesmanship, a degree. There is something beyond that. And that is the word we have been dealing with. It's the word discernment. That is being able to know beyond the surface, beyond what just normally presents itself as an opportunity or a setback, something good, something cherished, something to be pushed away, something to refrain from. How do we know? Sometimes we are told that great things come in rough packages. Great things come in simple packages. As we are told in English, you cannot judge a book by its cover. The cover may mislead you either way. And we all live in this world where you can find great reviews about a book, a place, a product, a hotel, a restaurant, something. And then when you go there, you find that everything you experience is the exact opposite of the reviews. Why? Because those reviews were subjective, they were personal. Actually, they could actually have come from the same person that just used alter egos, avatars, and now these days with AI, you don't even know who is the original <laughs> and who is the counterfeit. So there's a need for discernment. And that, maybe I should touch a bit on AI, because as we are seeing, even those who seem to be the gurus in this field are getting worried and getting 
cautious and sounding an alarm because I have watched a couple of adverts and programs where I was so sure that the person speaking to me was the real person until the real person came from another door. And then I knew this was not the real person. It was a double. And just a few days ago, I was watching on one of the news channels and they're talking about creating uh, friends, girlfriends, boyfriends, husbands and wives for people who are lonely, creating robotic forms. And I don't even want to dare to think on how unhelpful that could be in the long run. Because there's something unique about us as created by God. And so discernment is that ability that can only come from God. And I'm not talking about the regular suspicion, second guessing, extrapolating, uh, conjecturing, using street smartness. I'm talking about the spiritual qualitative characteristic that you just know. And one incident that I remember in the early days of the move of God at the beginning of the New Testament after the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. There was a situation where all the disciples, all the people were excited about what was happening. They had received new power, new enabling, enablement from God. They could pervade other people's worlds with languages they never learned. And it was just a great time. And everybody came together. They had a community. They lived around like a community. People were even selling lands, selling property and bringing for the growth of the community. And there was a couple. In the Bible, they are known as Ananias, the husband, as Sapphira or Sapphira, the wife. And if you are familiar with that story, you know that they also sold their land, but they did not speak the truth about the exact amount. And what was very strange about their lie and deception was that this was not something that was required. It was not a levy. It was not compulsory. People were just excited and they became generous and they were doing things from their free will accord because they wanted this community of faith people to grow. And so as people were selling properties, maybe selling homes and just bringing the money to the leaders of those days called the apostles, this couple thought, let them do the same thing. But it's probably one of those situations whereby maybe they wanted to sell their house for, who knows, let's say $100,000 and then they got a buyer for one ninety. And they felt, well, let's keep back some of the money. And so they decided, and you can find this in the third chapter of the book of the Acts of the Apostle. So in the New Testament, there are four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. The fifth book is called the Acts, the Actions, the Deeds, the ACTS. And you can find this in the third chapter. And going down the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, particularly the fifth, you, you'll find that. And so, guess what? They decided that the husband would go first, and he went all nice, probably joined the queue of people bringing their envelopes or their checks or whatever they were bringing, that this is proceeds from our land. We want to add to the community so there will be no lack. Everybody will enjoy, will grow together and spread the message together. And when Ananias brought it to Peter and John, the apostles, the leaders, they asked him, are you sure this is the amount? And he said, oh, yes. And this is what they said. Why has Satan put it in your heart to lie to God? Question is, how did they know? Because, ladies and gentlemen, Without discernment, there are people who can beat a polygraph test, beat a lie detector test. There are people who can look straight into your pupils and spin you a story that is not true. But they have a convincing look, sometimes a harmless look, sometimes a pitiable look, 
sometimes a victimized look that you buy their story or as the Americans say, you drink their Kool-Aid. It takes discernment to be able to tell that this person, though not looking great, is genuine. And this person looking all blingy blingy is false. So it was by discernment that the apostles were able to tell them this is not so. And unfortunately, for that kind of a lie, they grieved God's spirit and Ananias dropped down and died. A few hours later, Sapphira didn't see her husband, so she decided to go to the place where the apostles were. And she obviously must have greeted them and said, well, did her husband come here? They must have said, yes, well, he came. And they asked her the same thing. Is this the amount that you sold your prophet? And she said, yes. And probably if she was a woman from our continent, she'll be dramatic, maybe clap and start crying or doing all the shakenomics, as we call it. And the leaders told her the same thing. In fact, they went as far as saying that, behold, the feet of the men who carried your husband to bury him are coming back for you. They detected that grievous misdeed and lie by discernment. But also on the positive, how do we know when to move? How do I know that this is the right move? How do I know that I should take this? I should receive that job. I should... How do I know? How do I know what is the next step and the next move? Because the dealings of God in our lives, ladies and gentlemen, are not static. They are dynamic because we are growing. The biblical phrase of, the biblical phrase of it is from glory to glory. It's like climbing the rungs of a ladder. You are increasing. You should not be going backwards. You are growing. You are becoming more knowledgeable, even in age, in life, in academics, in health, in everything, in finances. You, you, you're getting smarter. But because life is not just what we see, hear, taste, smell, or touch, and it's not just brain power, we need to come into that place where discernment becomes part of our lives. So I can know by discernment that it's time to move on. It's time to drop this. It's time to change. It's time to pick up something else. In the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible, the book of beginnings, there's a very interesting story, one of my favorites, of Isaac. Isaac, the covenant son of Abraham. He went into a land because of farming and he went into the land because he discerned the voice of God telling him to stay. And ladies and gentlemen, if I told you that there is farming in a particular place and you stay there and you see everybody moving, people are putting their homes up for rent, for sale, they are parking, trucks are coming, cars are coming, Helicopters are landing, people are moving, the shops are closing, the markets are closing, and I tell you, stay. The question will be, are you serious? Are you all right? Can't you see what is happening? And I will tell you, yes, I can see. But life is not based on just seeing. Can't you hear what the people are saying? Yes, I can hear what the people are saying. But life is not just all about what the people see. Because the people can make a lot of noise and be wrong. The people can even be in the majority and be very wrong in their majority. Because the true deep things of life are not just circumscribed by seeing, touching, tasting, smelling and hearing. Discernment goes beyond the surface because discernment contacts intent, intention, purpose, Discernment goes to
to the real heart matter. It goes into the deep thoughts, the intentions, what the person really has in their heart. And it's that same ability that can make you look at this job and know that it's paying well, all is well. But I sense it's time to move. And for those who have moved, I know somebody who made such a move by discernment. And a few months later, when the organization they worked for closed its doors, every other person, every other staff member said to this person, you must have had inside information. You must have known something. The truth is, the person didn't really know anything. You say, Pastor Forbes, how do I know? Because that person came to my office and sought for counsel. And in, because I know that person's faith walk with God, the person said to me, Pastor, I know it's time to move on. And literally was moving on from a job that was paying well, housing well, transportation well, children's education, all taken care of in an international school. But you see, with discernment, there was something not settling in the person's heart. And that was the thing telling the person that this thing is going to close. And when it closes, you're going to join the job market. Why don't you move now? And the person moved. And everybody else who found out when it was announced then started scrambling. So discernment takes you ahead of the pack. Discernment makes you know it's time to move on. Ladies and gentlemen, I posit to us that a life guided by discernment is a beautiful life. It will bring things your way. It will protect you from things. It will bring people your way. It will protect people from you. It will do many things because it's a spiritual characteristic. It's not suspicion. It's not conjecture. That because it rained four days nonstop, it's going to rain on the fifth day. It's not like that. It's a real deep interaction with the purpose and the plan of God for your life. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, as I say all the time, unapologetically, I cannot tell you what I have not experienced. This life and the joy and the peace and the direction functionality of it is one that can be found when your life is submitted to God through Jesus Christ the Messiah. It's not a religious thing. It's not even an argument. Because there is a, in the fourth gospel of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, in John's gospel, chapter 14 and verse 6, check it out, 14 verse 6, Jesus Christ put it this way. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And nobody comes to the kingdom and the Father except through me. I am the doorway. And so levels of understanding that go beyond head knowledge and Serious gray matter, distinction, summa cum laude, and all the things we say. As I always say, we know that at the announcement of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are told that there were wise men. And these wise men went to King Herod to ask him about the birthing of the baby Jesus. And King Herod was enraged but managed to control himself and lied to them, tricked them and said, go and search diligently throughout my kingdom and when you have found where this baby is, come and bring me word that I will also go and pay my respects. But he wanted to kill the baby. My question has always been, these men were wise men, wise men, wise men, men of wisdom. How come they could not detect that the king was fooling them? Because physical wisdom is limited. It is discernment 
that will make you say that no matter how smiley, jovial, laughing, exciting, exhilarating, thrilling this person is, they're hiding something. No matter how quiet and seemingly aloof this person is, that's a great character before you. No matter how low the turnout or turnover of this business is, get ready for an explosion in the next few months. It's going to be like day and night shift. No matter how well-paying and great this job is, watch out. It's just about to go down. It's not written anywhere. And it's later on that we see all those financial scandals like with Mr. Bernard Madoff and all the housing crunches, some of the things that we see, Ponzi schemes, pyramid schemes. Sometimes you see educated, well-meaning, well-read, calculating, zero-risk-taking people fall right into those traps. Why? Because they were not discerning. Ladies and gentlemen, life will be great when we discern. So Isaac, in the first book of the Bible, Genesis in chapter 26, when God spoke to him and he discerned that this was the voice of God, he stayed in that land, sowed in that land. And you're thinking, Pastor Forbes, are you right? He sowed in a land of farming. Where did the water come from? The rest of the story is that in that same year, he harvested 30-fold yield, 60-fold yield, 100-fold yield. That's the best possible outcome. And suddenly, he became a wealthy man. He began to sell. People began to buy. And then his workers began to dig wells that had been covered. And they discovered water. Every well they dug, there was water. Every well they dug, there was water. Need I tell you that they opened a water processing factory. They sold cold water, ice water, sparkling water, flavored water, and they stretched the water business to all kinds of ways. What happened to everybody who ran away from the farming? I remember days in this country, the Gambia, when People were doing, everybody was rushing to Guinea-Bissau because there was business there. People were driving those Mercedes-Benz cars. It was like a pyramid scheme. The few people who got it quick, everything else tumbled down. There are people who have gotten into schemes that they have sold things and have regretted. There are other people who have been in places where opportunities came and they did not know. The decider is discernment. And I'm going to do my final part next week by the grace of God where I wrap it all in, particularly with Isaac's life, but just encouraging you to just give your life to God through the Messiah Christ, al Masihu, the Savior, and see the change, the turnaround that billions of us have experienced and walk into your destiny, your purpose, and your mandate. Until I come your way next week, by the special grace of Almighty God, this is Pastor Forbes saying, have a good day, and may God keep us all. Live a life of discernment. You will never regret it. Amen. Amen.